Joining me now to put it in perspective, a great historian in his own right, Fox News contributor, premier, uh, former uh, deputy White House chief of staff, Carl Rove. Carl, how are we back at this spot today? Well, we're back at this spot because in 2020 we nominated a and elected, uh, the Democrats nominated and the American people elected a president who was uh, 78 years old and uh, um, already suffering some challenges and they've only gotten worse. Uh, and you're right, we didn't know, uh, we didn't have the exposure that we normally have to candidates because of the, of the pandemic and as a result he hid out in his basement. And Joe Biden, you know, did uh, interviews uh, with, you know, local news anchors via Zoom. Uh, and that was what the presidential campaign was. Uh, there is a utility to having an actual campaign in which we get to take the measure of the candidate seeking the highest office in the land. But in 2020, from odd circumstances, we didn't have such a chance and we got what we got. And what do you think we have? Do we have a Democrat that's going to get a sympathy vote that is going to take a Senate seat from a conservative named Pat Toomey? You know, I think the Fetterman uh, issue is different because we're seeing it play out before the campaign. And I think it's a difficult thing to have the conversation uh, publicly. But I think a lot of people are privately looking at that and saying, really, do I think that guy is ready to do, take on this tough challenge? And do I have uh, ultimate confidence that he'll be uh, able to recover fully and do a good job for me. So I think it's going to be a hidden issue, not going to show up in the polls, but it's going to have a deep uh, impact on people's votes, I think. And and that's why the last uh, 11 and 12 days, uh, 10 or 11, 12 days of the campaign is going to be so critical because I think people are going to be looking at Dr. Oz very closely and saying, okay, I've got some deep concerns about Fetterman. Uh, do I think that Oz shares my values and will do a good job for me? And I'm I personally think that at the end of the day, Oz wins, and I think that's going to be a big consideration. I mean, whatever you think of the insider poll, it's the first time I've seen Dr. Oz actually leading in one. And when they start coming in clear, uh, when we have an idea what it's like in the rearview mirror of that one and only debate, we'll see the impact it will actually make. And you heard Chuck Schumer talking under his breath, caught on a hot mic, basically saying we weren't hurt too much by that debate. Do you think that that is damage control, or do you think he was hurt a lot by that debate? I think hope springs eternal in the breast of uh, Chuck Schumer, a leader of the Senate Democrats, that he'll be able to hold on to his role, and uh, Pennsylvania is going to play a vital role in that one way or the other. Uh, I think, though, it was wishful thinking. I don't think it was based in anything uh, substantive. I, you know, people are going to look at that and make their own decisions, and they're going to make it independent of the judgments of either Chuck Schumer or Mitch McConnell. And I, I, and I, I think the judgment is going to tend to be against Fetterman. I mean, this was really problematic. Why he did it is beyond me. There, there's political malpractice on the part of his consultants and his handlers, but they probably did the people of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania a deep service by putting him in the debate so the voters could see where he actually is and what he's capable of. And you know what? The, the country, uh, let's be honest, we can't have somebody in there. Do you think that little of a Senate spot to think somebody who's having clear problems has to read things closed caption to understand what people are saying to him uh, can do a job like that? I mean, if you or I had that problem, uh, we would not be able to do this, what we're doing right now. I would not be on the air. Even though the sympathy probably would be strong, I couldn't do it, Carl. I don't know why there's even a gray area here. Yeah. Look, members of the Congress, House and Senate, have had serious illnesses that have been debilitating. Senator Mark Kirk, Republican of Illinois, for example, uh, had in the middle of his term uh, a, a very serious stroke. But what we're talking about here is the voters have the ability to make a decision. The case of Mark Kirk, he was clearly not able to get back to, to, to where he was before the stroke. And when he ran in the election, people voted him down. Now, this happened to Fetterman while he was running. But let's also step back for a minute. First of all, turns out he had very serious health problems when he was running for lieutenant governor and didn't reveal them. It turned out he had AFib and that he didn't pay attention to it, that he put himself at a higher risk of a stroke. And sure enough, this stroke happened. So voters are going to be looking at that in its, in its in totality and saying, OK, you know, it's one thing if you're in office, you get to make a decision whether you think you can get back or not. But we're sitting here, you're asking us for a vote for the next six years. And we have little or no confidence, some of them will say, we have little or no confidence that you're going to be able to get back to 100 percent. So the uh, difference if it happens while you're in office than before, the voters mm -hmm. are going to take that into consideration. Conventional wisdom says the House goes Republican. Call Rove. I put play record on my VCR before the show, so I'll tape this and play it back. Do you believe the Senate goes to the Republicans or Democrats when it's all said and done? Are we at a runoff in Georgia after November 8th? 
Uh, I think it, it goes to the Republicans narrowly, but it's going to be a very interesting, not just night, uh, but, but potentially several days and could be a month. I say several days because Wisconsin, where there's a critical race, Ron Johnson, and Pennsylvania don't allow uh, local election officials to begin working the mail-in ballots, the early ballots, until the polls close, unlike a lot of other states. Texas is one where the local election officials literally are in a position where they can run those ballots as soon as the polls close, and mm -hmm. as, as a result, they're reported early. But it may be several days before, in a close race, before we know who wins in Pennsylvania or Wisconsin. Right. I, I feel pretty good about Wisconsin that it, we're going to know relatively early, but both of those states have this odd quirk in their law that I think is unconstructive to the, to the uh, people's continuing confidence in our system right. of, of elections. Yeah, try to get that change, Carl, if you can. You have a lot of power. Carl Rove, thanks so much. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.